All right, hello everyone. Welcome to Python phase two, intermediate Python um, with the UCR UAS team. Um, so this is gonna be day one of our Python phase two. Um, and we're gonna be starting off with learning how to use a pip installer as well as do some intermediate Python code. Um, and this will be done with um, with myself, Sahas Poyakar, um, and then uh, Scott Vo, as and he's going to be doing most of the coding and instructing for today. Um, general announcements. So for phase one, we had some uh, projects, a final project that was um, that was assigned for spring break, and we got some excellent submissions. And we haven't quite finished grading all of them yet, so we'll be releasing all of the um, reviews and any kind of information regarding that uh, by this weekend. So look out for that. Um, and then uh, other than that, we're going to be also releasing some more information about the general topics covered for phase two uh, later on uh, that same weekend as well. So look out for that in, uh, in Discord. Uh, other than that, I think that is all the general announcements. So why don't we go ahead and get started? So yeah. I'll let Scott take over. All right, thanks, Ahas. Uh, yeah, so uh, again, we're gonna start off with uh, installing some libraries that we're gonna be using for the rest of the phase. So uh, the first thing that we're gonna do is make sure our terminal is open. So this is the same thing that we were using to run our code last quarter. <clears throat> and you wanna make sure that you're um, running it on the right terminal. So uh, basically anything that uh, you're running the Python on last quarter is the same terminal that you're running it on this quarter. So uh, if it's not open yet, you can do a uh, terminal at the very top uh, and then click on new terminal and it'll open something similar to this at the bottom. Right. And <clears throat> after that, you need to just type in pip and uh, this is basically saying I want the command pip to be run, and then we can pass in some other stuff to tell it what to install. So uh, in this case, we're going to be installing pandas. So uh, what we're going to be doing is doing pip install pandas. And it'll basically connect to the internet really quickly and check if you already have the libraries. And if you don't, it'll download. So um, in my case, my computer already has pandas installed. Uh, so that's why it says a lot of uh, requirement already satisfied. But if you don't have it installed already, which most of you will not have, then you can, uh, you can just wait for that to download. Uh, so pandas is a data uh, manipulation library, which lets us uh, take in a bunch of data, do some uh, operations on it really quickly in Python uh, with the ease of how easy it is to type in Python. So, uh, you know, if you were to get, uh, if you wanted to take the average of an entire table, you can do that with just a line of code, uh, but it'll run just as fast as if you were to do it in uh, C or C++, uh, maybe even faster. <clears throat> and uh, what Pandas is built on is another library called NumPy, uh, which is another library that's uh, really used for efficiency. Uh, they basically let you do a lot of matrix or table uh, operations with the speed of C++ with, uh, but still with the ease of use of Python. So um, that's actually a requirement of uh, pandas. So generally, if you have installed pandas or after you install pandas, uh, it'll already have NumPy installed for you, but you can just do that uh, just in case. So it'll be pandas install number, oh, sorry, pip install numpy. And that'll go through. And so you can see that I already have numpy installed. And one thing that you can actually do to see what you have installed is you pip list. And that'll show all the libraries that you have. So I have a few things um, extra from, you know, projects, uh, but Generally, that's going to be where you look at which libraries you have installed. Um, so any questions on that part? Uh, I know that uh, installation and setup can be the hardest part of a project. So uh, if there's any issues, this is a good time to try to squash them. Yeah, 
And uh, let's see, getting pip command not found. Ah, yes, okay. So uh, that is an issue to be solved by um, Python. And uh, what I'm doing right now is just checking the pip documentation uh, to see what command you need to install pip. So um, th this is a skill that is really important for um, anything in coding. So depending on your uh, operating system, you need to do specific commands. Uh, can we briefly go over the libraries that we'll install and what they're used for? So uh, good question. So right now, we're mostly doing uh, pandas and NumPy. Uh, later on, we'll install other ones, but for now, uh, it's just pandas, just to learn how to use pip really quickly. Uh, and pandas is a library that's for a really big table. So think of Excel on steroids. Um, so it'll have the computational power to get through all those huge tables really quickly. Uh, and it'll have really powerful functions that let you perform calculations on uh, all that data. So if you're on uh, Linux, that, so Scott, we might have to go through um, the path for pip installation process maybe like uh, get if oh, you're yeah, on a windows computer you might have to get that all set up so uh should we quickly go over that um yeah uh, for now why don't you try this uh these commands if it's not python it might be python 3. um let's see Yeah, otherwise uh, we might have to go through the path. Yeah, so uh, let's try that out. Oh, using pip3. Oh yes, that's also a thing. Um, so Python's a little weird where between Python 2 and 3, uh, there was a lot of uh, changes. So they decided to not put, <laughs> not, not do any extra work and just have separate, uh, separate things for Python 2 and 3. So uh, yeah, if it's not, if pip isn't working, Go ahead and try pip3. Um, but yeah, it's uh, if that worked out for you, uh, that's wonderful. If, uh, is there anyone uh, else that has issues with that? So I'm going to go ahead and put another command in. Uh, this is for Windows. Uh, pi dash m pip install dash u pip. I think that will um, also install pip. And then um, if that still doesn't work, we can go over the path and so uh, how to get that into your path as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, but if there's no issues so far, uh, we'll just move on. And if any issues do pop up, feel free to uh, post it in the chat or unmute your mic. Uh, we have a, a little bit of a smaller class this time so we can <clears throat> um, so we can be a little bit more uh, personal with <laughs> fixing some of the issues. Okay, well, you guys so a bit, a bit more time to get um, everything installed. Um, and if you guys can give, maybe give like a, like a thumbs up if it's still working for you or a thumbs down if it's not, just to kind of uh, see if we can gauge if anyone still needs help with PIP installation, because that will be um, pretty important moving on when we're working with bigger or with, with more of the different library that Python has to offer. Sorry, Scott, um, were you either going to say something? Oh, no, no worries. Uh, we're just right. getting ready to move on to the next topic once we're good with that. Mm -hmm. I've got a few thumbs up, so it looks like it's working across the board. Um, we'll just give it one more minute, and then we'll move on to the next set of instructions. Yes, I believe WSL uses Ubuntu as um, 
for, for all of its command stuff. So you should be able to use that as a Linux system. Yeah, that's exactly correct. Yeah, um, the terminal that I'm using is actually WSL. So uh, everything that I sh I'm doing should work for you as well. Yeah, so if anyone has WSL installed, um, that'll typically make your life much easier for developing because everything tends to work pretty well in Linux environments, uh, unlike with Windows where you had to jump through a bunch of hoops. All right, it looks like there's no other questions so far. And if there are any questions, we're going to eventually be posting our office hours. So you guys can always hop in there. We can help you with uh, getting your installers working or any other questions you might have. So yeah, um, I think we're ready to move on though. All righty. Yeah, thanks, Haas. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, without further ado, I guess we'll move on to our main content for the day. So. Uh, we're not really dealing with any of our libraries just yet, but today we're going to be working on a little bit more advanced Python standard library stuff. So this is everything that's built into Python. You don't have to do any imports or anything. Um, it's just things that are useful for programming that, you know, if you've learned other programming languages, they might not be super apparent, uh, but they are really useful. They save you from having to implement a lot of things. So uh, the first thing we're going to go over is enumeration. So this is something that we went over in the data structures class um, or the data structures lecture where we were iterating through a list. But um, I think it's important enough to warrant uh, going over twice. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have a list or any, any iterable uh, object. So a list, dictionary, um, anything like that, uh, even a tuple. But, uh, Right now, we'll just do a list because that's kind of like the more universal data structure. Um, so like, let's say if we had a list of names and we just wanted to print out, um, you know, in, in C++, you would have like for int and i equals zero, i less than x size, et cetera. And then we would do, um, it would be something like C out uh, x i, and then you could also see how I. Um, in Python, it's actually a lot easier. So what you could do is use the enumerate uh, function. So what enumeration does is it basically converts every element of the list into a tuple uh, with that element as well as which uh, index it is. So if I were to do for index comma I in enumerate X, so know how we're passing in the list into enumerate. So that's telling Python that we want to convert this uh, list into basically that same list, but also pass uh, pull out the indices or the places of the uh, elements. So we could just print out, um, let's see, we can just do i is the index element. And we can just print, uh, run that really quickly. And remember to save your files, folks. Uh, Python is two to five. Oops. Python three. All right. So uh, again, we start with a zero when we're doing computer science stuff. Um, but uh, what it does is it basically gets our index, which is these numbers right here, and it lets us. Uh, keep count of which, uh, which one's which. So this is really useful for, um, you know, if we were to look for the, you know, the index of a, the smallest uh, element of a list, for example. So if I had like um, test scores or something and you had like 98, 100, uh, 72, uh, 80, uh, 89, and you know, you, you, you wanted to like get the, uh, the index of the max score, right? So you have like max index uh, equals negative one for now, because we don't know what it is. Um, and you just have like max equals negative one for uh, index i in numerate scores. So uh, let's just test this out right now. So we can print out index and we can print out i. So 
printing out index will give us the place that we have, and then printing out I will have uh, will give us oops will give us the uh, the value. So right here we have the zero and the ninety eight because ninety eight is the first one, uh, etc. So what we can do is just find um, you know if I is greater than max, max equals I, and uh, max index equals index, right? So we can just say, <clears throat> um, we can just say print the max score is max in index, and then we do max index. We save and we run. Right. So we have here the max score is 100 and index one, which is exactly what it is. So, right. So we, we can find uh, what the index is, but it makes it a lot easier to um, to it, it makes it a lot more readable because we're uh, basically just putting in a letter instead of doing like uh, x instead of doing something like uh, x at index or something. It makes it a lot easier to read, um, and it's not actually a little bit more efficient uh, in terms of Python because it's already unpacking the entire list for us. Right, and uh, <clears throat> yeah, that's basically it for enumeration. Uh, it's really useful for a lot of larger lists where you know, you're know you going through hundreds and hundreds of things and uh, you, you don't really wanna bother uh, calculating the index or uh, keeping track of where, where do you wanna put your square brackets or anything like that. Um, yeah, but moving on. If I can comment this out, oops, there you go. Moving on, uh, kind of the opposite of what we were doing with enumerating is uh, zipping. So uh, for example, if I, had, um, if I had names and test scores, for example, or names and uh, number of objects that they own, uh, you, we can do something called zipping. So this is also something that we went over during our uh, data structures lecture. Um, so for example, we had, um, let's say, let's say a list called people and we have Sahas, Stephen and Miller. And we had, um, let's see, number of cars, for example. Uh, and we had like one, three, and five. <clears throat> what we could do is, you know, um, for I in range, um, blend people. So this is kind of like a C++ style uh, of programming it. You, you know, you can print out um, people at I. Oh. You can print out people at I. Has uh, num cars at I cars. Right, um, that's kind of like a C++ implementation of it. But what you could do is um, print out, or we, you can actually loop them, uh, what we call parallelly. So we can just say for um, I, J, so I and J in, uh, what we're gonna do is zipping it. So think of like a zipper, the teeth kind of line up with each other. So we're gonna zip people and num cars. And let's comment this out really quickly. Uh, uh, for now, let's just print out I and J to see what it does. All right, so it basically packages these together uh, into one thing. So we can loop through uh, both lists at once without having to deal with any indices. And uh, then we can just do like, um, you know, uh, I as J cars. And we just print that out again. So 
uh, pretty simple, but it's really powerful, uh, especially if you have a bunch of different um, lists that you need to uh, link together. So this is really common in uh, things with data where you know you have a bunch of different data uh, that might be stored in different lists, right? So you can have like people's heights and weights uh, stored in like a height and a weight list uh, or you know any other attributes about them. And you know some, sometimes it's good to have them separate so that you can just pick and choose what you want. Uh, but when you put them together, uh, what's really good to do is use zipping on it. So it keeps everything together and make sure that you don't have any mix-ups uh, between the two lists. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so that's basically it for lists, uh, for zip. Uh, any questions on that? I'm uh, still doing enumeration. Yep, no worries. Um, and uh, if you uh, if you all want, we can post the code for this uh, after the lecture. <clears throat> uh, otherwise, we can just move on. Yeah, um, this is just a really quick one. It's just reversing a list. Uh, it's, I'll admit it's not the most uh, commonly used one, but it's still good to know uh, just in case you do need to reverse any list. And um, it's, it's actually really, uh, it's not too much coding. It's literally one line. So uh, if you print it out, people you have, Saha Stephen Miller. Oh, And if you print out, um, so one thing that uh, is easy to mess up is you just pass in the reverse, uh, but Python actually returns an iterator. So that's kind of um, what they use to execute the reverse. But what we can do is just convert that into a list. So uh, basically from the inside out, we start with our list, we get a, uh, reverse version and we convert it into a list after that. All right, so if we were to save and run that one more time, uh, we have that reversed. And that works with any number of uh, items. Like even if there's only one item in this list, uh, it would work perfectly fine. All righty. <clears throat> So that's uh, most of the basic stuff. Um, here, here's some uh, stuff that's a little more useful. So uh, one, one thing that's kind of like a hallmark uh, test of skill in computer science is like sorting lists or sorting a, an array of items. So uh, well, the developers of Python did something really nice and they implemented that for us and it, they made it really easy. So what we can do is uh, we, we, we can just uh, pass in, um, we can just pass in a list into sorted. So we, we just print out sorted and then pass in people to that. And that will be, uh, let's see, let's just print out the before and after just for comparison. All right, so the original, it's out of order. You know, that's just the way that we instantiated it. Uh, and then after, the, after we sort it, it just uh, prints it out in alphabetical order. So this is like the default way to uh, sort things uh, in Python, but you can, uh, <clears throat> or with strings, but you can specify certain ways to uh, print uh, sort things, which we'll go into in a bit. Um, but just like how this works with uh, strings, this also works with numbers. So uh, we had x equals one, five, two, three, nine. And we printed out um, sorted version of x. It would get sorted by value. Uh, same thing works with like 
if you had floating point values, so any diction, uh, any decimals, uh, it would do that automatically. So this is really powerful. Uh, it takes a lot of the workout uh, instead of working on trying to figure out the documentation for uh, C++ sorting, for example. Th those are pretty uh, complicated to use. Uh, but this one, you can just do it in a single line. So this is really nice. Um, moving uh, on to a little bit more advanced topics with sorting. Um, so let's say you had our list of names, right? And you didn't want to sort it based on the alphabetical order. You wanted to sort it based on, you know, something like the, the length of the strings. So what you can do is uh, something called, uh, is basically passing a, a function into how you want to sort it. So uh, we had our list of people. Now we've printed out uh, a sorted version of it. Um, sorted actually takes in multiple uh, arguments, right? So if we hover over sorted, uh, it actually takes in the key. And this is really important for us. Uh, the key is basically, how do we want to sort it? Or what do we want to sort it by? So uh, what, we, what, what it takes in is a function that takes in, um, <clears throat> that takes every element and spits out a number. So for example, if you wanted to uh, sort it by the length of each element, we'd just pass in key equals len. So uh, if you would remember, if we wanted to do len of like sahas or something, uh, that would, that would uh, spit out five, right? Cause there's five characters. So uh, the key would be which function we're using. So whatever, uh, whatever this function right here spits out for each of the elements is what number it's going to use for sorting. So if we were to print that out, it would print that out in ascending order of how long the names are, right? So we have uh, five letters here, six here, and seven here for Steven. So that adds um, a lot of functionality. Uh, and, you know, even uh, if we were to uh, want even more customization. We can actually write our own functions here, uh, which is called a lambda function. So, uh, if for some weird reason you wanted to sort by, you know, maybe the last character of their name, um, you could print out like, or you can sort it by using something called lambda function, which is um, which is something we'll go over in a second, but. Uh, just a demonstration, it would have key equals lambda. Uh, and then we do A and then, so the ord is like the ordinance. So that means it basically converts the uh, character into a number. So uh, it would be like A is always before B, et cetera. Um, lower cases are usually before capitals, uh, stuff like that for your characters. And you pass in A and then uh, it, you know, if we were sorting by the last uh, letter in our uh, words, it would be negative one, right? So we can just print that out. So uh, here we would be uh, sorting by N, R, and S, and this does look correct, right? So N comes before R, which comes before S. Um, so that lets us sort by a lot of different things. Um, <clears throat> And you know one 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 important thing is um, or one more thing you can do with uh, sorting like this is if you had uh, a little bit differently formatted data, uh, you could sort based on different numbers. Uh, and before I move on to this part, uh, are there any questions uh, on this part? This is a lot of new. Uh, content. Uh, what was the lambda key sorting by again? Uh, so this one sorts by sorts by the last character. So S and and R.
right. So uh, if we were to run it one more time here. Right, it um, basically gets the last character, right? That's where we have um, A of negative one. So uh, this formatting uh, is a little weird, but we'll go over that in just a second. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so yeah, the good, good question. So uh, let's say we had something like this, uh, where we had like people and cars uh, again, and we wanted to sort the names by, you know, how many, uh, cars they had, right? So we just wanted to make a ranking. Uh, you know, this could be with any any numerical value or any value that can be sorted in the first place. So um, here we would have, uh, you know, in, in this case, Sahas would have five cars, Stephen would have three, and Miller would have eight. So we wanted to um, print out uh, a ranking. It would be uh, ages. Uh, oops. It would be sorted and then people and cars. And our key would be uh, A1. So this is saying for every element, if we called it A, we would sort it by the second element in that, uh, or the second item in that element. So whenever we, whenever it goes through an item, it would take in this entire tuple here, everything inside those parentheses and look at the one in the one space. So that's the second item. So instead of sorting by the string sahas, it would be sorting by the value five, three and eight. And if we print that out, uh, we do get a ranking like that. And <clears throat> we can, um, oh, actually, yeah, that's basically um, it for Lambda. So how the Lambda works is it's basically doing a function, uh, an entire function definition in the line, which is, uh, it sounds a little weird, but it's mostly for very simple things like how, uh, what, what item you wanna um, sort by. So uh, so, uh, if this was a function, it would be it, uh, just it would be um, get second element, and it would be it would pass in an element, and it would literally just return element one. Or if we wanted to keep the same naming convention, um, it would basically just do that. So this right here is the same thing as the Lambda function. All right, so um, this is the same thing as why uh, using the length would work, right? So we were doing, uh, we just did key equals len. Uh, that's basically saying, okay, well, whatever the length returns, I'll just sort by that, right? Uh, any questions on that part? All right, so um, that's basically it for lambdas. Uh, they're they're pretty. Uh, I have to say they're not super intuitive to work with uh, when you're first starting. Uh, I'll admit I'm not super used to them as well, but they're really useful in these kind of things where uh, you know you you have a really simple thing that you need to um, tell Python, but it's not really it doesn't really work out to just um, you know pass in values, right? Uh, especially with these kind of things where you're telling. Uh, you're telling Python to do a certain thing with a certain method. Yeah, and like Sahas is saying in the chat, they're really useful in uh, with the pandas library, where you know you're telling pandas um, uh, to to take out uh, certain values or take out uh, or sort things by uh, certain numbers within them. So uh, it's well, we'll get into it more during the Python, like uh, the pandas lecture, but uh, for now, this is kind of an intro to using Lambda functions. Uh, moving on to uh, the next topic, which is list comprehensions. 
so we kind of actually did this during our list lecture again, but uh, we're going to go a little bit more in depth. So, so far we've been, um, we've been looping through one dimensional lists, right? So this is basically just a list of uh, single objects. So if we want to loop through this, it would just be for I in X and I, right? And we just print out all of them. <clears throat> Oops, let's get these commented out. Um, but what if it was a little bit more complicated, right? So we had a two dimensional list, by the way, uh, for example. So we had a list that said um, something like that, right? So there's, think of it like a table where the first row, is one, two, three, four, five. The second row is two, four, six, eight, ten. And you also have columns, right? Um, so if I were to do the same uh, for loop, yeah, and just like Saz so is saying, this is like a 2D list. If we were to do the same for loop, um, are, are there any guesses of what it would print out if we just did for i and x? Yeah, so if we were to print it out, uh, it would basically say, okay, what items are in the list X? Well, um, yeah, it would print out by rows, exactly. It would basically say, okay, well, this list is holding a bunch of lists. So I'll just print out the entire lists uh, within it. So that's exactly what it does. Um, so you can actually do a bunch of things on it. So, you know, you could actually just, uh, well, I guess uh, since they're already sorted, it wouldn't, oops, it wouldn't really do anything different, but it would, um, you can actually do a lot of things to the list while you're passing it in. Uh, one thing to note is that I cannot be changed. Basically, you can't do I equals um, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, because uh, what it does, uh, what Python is doing basically is getting a copy of it. So if you're changing I here, you're not actually changing whatever row in X, you're just changing uh, where that copy is stored, right? So this isn't, uh, this is more for if you're just reading, uh, you're just reading a bunch of numbers and you're doing calculations on them, uh, but you don't wanna actually change the, uh, the originals. All right, so this is like if you wanna, uh, if you were given a table of a bunch of weights, right, and you had, uh, and everything was in pounds, but your uh, whoever was paying you for your program wanted it in kilograms. Uh, but you don't wanna go and mess up your own data. So what you can do is you just uh, divide it, uh, multiply it by, you know, 2.1, right? Or divide it by 2.1. So um, this would be kind of, where you would do that. Uh, in addition, you can actually just, uh, you can actually also do a double for loop, right? So for uh, J in I, so notice how we're doing for J in I here, because we wanna loop through that entire row and we can just print that out. All right, so it just prints out every single item. And uh, one thing to know is that this takes uh, quite a bit of lines of code. So what we could do is do what's called a one-liner. So uh, this is a little bit of a niche use, but I think it's very useful for readability of your code. So this uh, one line basically does um, for i in x print i. So if we were to do that, uh, we can 
just print it out. And know how we put uh, square brackets here. So this is really useful um, for something like this. So <clears throat> right now we're, we're just saying, okay, if we had an I for every I and X, you print out an I, but um, if we wanted to take, you know, the sum of each row, for example, so it, in the real world, it would be, um, you know, what's, uh, if, if each column was someone, uh, a portion of someone's income, you could ask, okay, can I have a list of everyone's total income? Uh, instead of doing like, you know, getting, getting the sum each row and saving it into a new list, uh, what we can do is just do uh, what's called a sum uh, or the sum function. So that basically gets the sum of entire list and saves it. And what we do here is, well, we tell Python to do that for every single row in X, right? So we print that out. We have 15 and 30. So the 15 is the first row, and then the 30 is the second row. Um, so any questions on that part before we move on? We're almost finished with the today's content. So we do have a little bit of extra time if you have any questions. All right. Um, so yeah, uh, again, if you have any questions, feel free to put it in the chat uh, or unmute yourself. Uh, otherwise, we'll move, out, uh, move on to uh, dictionaries, which are, uh, in my opinion, one of the most, oh, too busy typing to ask questions, no worries. And uh, if you're, you're struggling to keep up with the code, uh, don't worry, we have, uh, we will be posting the code after the class. Um, so yeah, but if you prefer to just experiment with the code yourself, uh, don't worry about that. Just the do your thing, whichever will help you uh, learn the best. That's what we're here for. Um, but yeah, we, we will have some extra time uh, to answer questions later on. Uh, so yeah, so moving on to our dictionaries. So uh, this is just some useful tools that you can use um, since dictionaries on their own are pretty powerful, especially the way that we already learned, right? So if we had a, uh, dictionary that had, uh, you know, the same info that we had before. Uh, we had sauce and then two, uh, Stephen five, Miller 10. Uh, and, you know, if we were to put these in separate lines, so it's a little bit easier to read. Uh, we can just print out X just to see how that is, uh, how that looks. All right, prints out the dictionary exactly how you wanted it. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to try out the items function. All right, so we print that out. Um, basically, turns these into a a bunch of tuples, right? So that means our keys, the ones on the left, are getting paired with the uh, with the items on the right. And notice how this is a list. Uh, so this is iterable. So we were to for i in x dot items, we can just print out i. All right, and that basically decompresses our dictionary into something that we can uh, treat basically like a list. So we won't have uh, the powerful search uh, method or searching power that we have in uh, dictionaries where you know, it, it instantly gets, <clears throat> uh, gets the item within the key, but it makes it a lot easier to do other computations with it, right? And um, you know, if we were to do something like that, we could just print out the <clears throat> the key, uh, sorry, the items within those. Uh, so those are pretty useful. Um, so yeah, th these are really similar to uh, zipping. It's just instead of getting two lists and zipping them into a bunch of tuples, it's going the opposite direction of uh, packing and unpacking where we get, uh, these are called, so these are dictionaries. So 
uh, we went over these during last quarter's uh, lectures, but this is uh, we're, we're focusing on the items part of it. So this lets us uh, treat these basically like lists. So it's a dictionary iterator. Um, I would say it's a way to iterate through a dictionary if you needed to. So um, this is kind of a shaky road because generally um, you, you don't want your dictionaries to be um, sortable or anything like that. Like you, the data inside of a dictionary is not always ordered, uh, but if you happen to implement something where you did use a dictionary that had data that could be ordered, this is how you do it. Uh, or if you just had code that worked with lists really well, but not with dictionaries, this would uh, be how you do it. All right, and um, so just like with uh, just like with lists, you can actually sort them. So uh, this goes to your point where uh, where you could use it basically like a list. So you can just do um, sorted uh, x to items, and then the key would be. Uh, you would have a lambda function, right? Because uh, it, it's not super apparent to Python how you'd want to uh, sort it. So you need to tell Python, okay, hey Python, I need you to sort by, um, you know, I, you could sort it by uh, the the second item. So basically, the numbers. Oops. And once you sort it, that would just be uh, printing out by value. And you know this is already sorted, so uh, if I were to change this to like 100, for example, you know Stephen uh, Stephen's 100 would be at the end, <clears throat> right? And uh, yeah, that's basically it for the items. It's uh, you know you can do uh, you know, if we were to do lens, uh, or if we were to do a zero, it would uh, do it by alphabetical order, right? So that's why we have Miller, Saha, Steven. Um, you can also do like something like that uh, if your lists are more complex. All right, so that's, uh, again, that's based on the length of the first element in the list. So it's telling Python, okay, I need you to uh, sort these, but only look at the length of the names, basically. Um, but yeah, with about 10 minutes left, I think that's all the main content. So if you don't have any questions, I think we can just let you go. If you do have questions, uh, please uh, let us know. We are here to help and we'll do our best to uh, clarify anything. Uh, can I make a suggestion? Yeah, sure. Oh, um, yeah, so, um, oh, sorry. I just saw the chat. Yeah, go ahead. So um, I'll go ahead and take this question. Um, so for this phase, phase two, since we're going to go into more complicated um, uh, like, or more intermediate Python programming, we actually won't uh, be having any lecture notes uh, for any of our uh, classes for this quarter. So uh, we will just have the code available after the class because um, we want to make sure that we're kind of following um, the same kind of structure that we already um, did last quarter, or yeah, last quarter phase one, where we coded all of our information, had it kind of associated with our notes. So we'll just go ahead and post these um, Python files after the fact. Um, and then in terms of notes, we'll actually be giving you guys some actual Python documentation because a lot of 
uh, Python programmers, uh, whenever they're working with new libraries, will always have to face um, kind of the wrath of dealing with Python documentation. And uh, if you guys want to um, continue learning Python, I feel like it's going to be super useful for you guys to get exposed to actually reading and understanding Python documentation. Maybe uh, during office hours, we could um, do like kind of uh, tutorials on how to comprehend these Python um, documentation for different libraries because it can get a little overwhelming with trying to figure out where to search for things. But uh, moving forward, we're going to be using Python documentation as kind of our uh, quote unquote lecture notes. So we'll be providing really good resources for that in our Discord. Um, and yeah, so we're going to, and in terms of formatting for the rest of class, it's going to be just um, us going over a certain topic. Like next uh, next week, I'm, I'm going to be covering using a specific library, uh, two specific libraries, actually, the operating systems library and uh, systems library, which helps you interact with your computer's file management, which is going to be a really powerful tool. So we'll, um, we're, we're going to eventually provide some resources for that as well. Uh, but yeah. Thanks for the suggestion. Yeah. Um, and just to add one more thing. Uh, so phase two will be a little bit more of an exhibition uh, kind of phase of the course since uh, we're doing a little bit more intermediate uh, topics. There isn't really much time to uh, go into the nitty gritty of things, especially if we only have one week, uh, one hour of class per week. Um, so it's more of a, okay, well, here's what you can do with the library. and this is the code that we use, but uh, we really uh, encourage you to try out like some of the Googling, read the documentation, um, especially on Stack Overflow. Stack Overflow is your friend here. Uh, I have to say, I, uh, I think 90% of what I've coded has been from researching on Stack Overflow, seeing how the heck the code works, uh, how, how's the best way to write it, uh, you know, how's the best way to make sure my, my code doesn't break anything. Um, so it's going to be a lot of uh, hands-on work this quarter, uh, and yeah, it's we're we're going to be showing some really cool stuff. But uh, as a result, it's going to be a little bit less of um, you know a, a how-to and more of a look what you can do kind of thing. But uh, like Saha said, thank you for this suggestion. I have a can I make can I further that suggestion or slash question? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Uh, would there be a way for for us to like preview what you're going to um to do before before the lecture so so i wouldn't have to like you know type type the code and uh, um, compile while, while listening at the same time that sort of stuff uh, I suppose least, what we could as a primer do uh, I, I suppose what we could try and do is um release the doc like any of the documentations for any of the libraries that we're going to be covering uh before the class so you guys can take a look at that. Um, we can look into maybe setting up some kind of, as you mentioned, primer code. Um, but um, in terms of setup for this quarter, we, we don't have that already in the works. So um, if we can get that complete um, and deliver to you guys on Discord or emails, uh, we'll definitely try to provide any kind of resources uh, you guys might need before class. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so it looks like we are starting to reach the end of time. So I'm going to do a few kind of quick, quick announcements in terms of uh, what we're going to be doing moving forward. So for phase one, we had lots of homework uh, because we're going over the introductory um, material to Python and how we want to, um, or kind of teaching you guys how to use Python to, uh, from the ground up. Uh, and as Scott mentioned, for phase two, it's a lot of um, uh, kind of, I guess, demonstration on what you can uh, do with Python, what you're capable of doing with Python. So we won't really be having any homework assignments for this uh, quarter as well. Um, if, But maybe if you guys want any kind of homework resources, we could try and point you in the right direction, but there won't be any kind of grading or anything like that. Uh, and that's because uh, with this phase, it's a lot more open-ended when it comes to what you can do with these libraries. So it's harder to develop specific uh, projects involving them. And there will always be some kind of complications with using these libraries. So uh, that, it just again, um, there won't be any kind of a homework or like assignment things to really be looking forward to. Uh, we may consider maybe doing a final project, but that's still kind of up in the ears in terms of if that's gonna actually happen. So yeah, that's, that's everything in terms of assignments. Um, and 
uh, just last minute general announcements would be uh, we're going to be continuing these specific times for our classes, um, four to five, and uh, office hours information will be posted. All of our general information will be posted on Discord. So look, um, look forward to that. Is there anything I'm missing out on, Scott, or do you think I covered everything? Uh, I think that's everything, actually. Yeah. yeah all right, cool. So yeah, once again, thanks for coming to phase two of Python. Uh, we hope to see you guys again next week um, where I'm gonna be covering operating system uh, library and just general system library and what you can do with manipulating um, your file systems on your computer. And um, and we're gonna do a lot more cooler, uh, cooler uh, library stuff later on after that. But yeah, thanks for coming everyone. And um, we hope to see you guys next week. Um, yeah.